आपसे बात करके मुझे बहुत खुशी हो रही है और आ, अभी जितनी सारी खबरें आती हैं उसमें आप, आपकी जो स्माइल है वो बहुत ही अश्योरिंग we have to keep it at like we we have grown up like this i was born as a refugee kid in refugee camps uh, out uh, other side of the divran line and i grew up in taliban first era and then the last 20 years war i have seen every seen on, with my own eyes and i have experienced and uh, now facing this situation so not quite new for us though so disturbing after the 20 years after all the dreams we had for our democracy for our republic government and all these things young kids who were born after 2001 and then now they're studying in universities they went to schools and universities after 2001 uh, they've been brought up like in a very different situation than our generation as i told you, i was a refugee kid but they were in this country they went to school they had the new education and they saw the new uh, face of afghanistan and uh, now suddenly it is changing for them it is disturbing actually for them but uh, we have more hope for them than ourselves because uh, as i joke to my nephews my younger brothers and this that this tiktok generation could do more than uh, what we could do uh, but let's hope uh, things are changing if they have here but still we have to hope actually with all the chaos going on around here all the uh, shit show which is on scene on media you can see it uh, one different thing that uh, i could uh, experience in last week is our new generation mostly teenagers and those who are in their early 20s who have been experienced the first era of taliban they are quite positive they go going forward they, uh, this is we won't take no for an answer uh, i remember my younger sister and my nephew uh, they like teenager girls but they went to their school despite that government announced that schools are closed we won't we will open it uh, like after some time and we will announce the way we going to deal with school uh, girls school especially but they didn't stay back home they went to school they st- uh, start talking there they start uh, posting on social media mm, uh, the same is with boys like uh, all these protests in last week uh, with the national flag they were mostly t- teenage boys they were mostly people with their in their early 20s or uh, late uh, t- teenage so they i think they are more positive they think like uh, those people with uh, their 40s with the 50s with their strict interpretation of religion and political g- games also they cannot change our life they cannot uh, force us to do things we, we are not willing to do or uh, to stop us from doing things we are willing uh, doing like going to university taking, taking education working going for sports clubs going for uh, talking about their future life talking about their country's uh, symbols like national flag like the constitution like uh, uh, the, the government uh, or voting system there's they have already started talking while we the elders if i could count myself uh, though i mean my uh, i just turned 30 we we are more scared because we have seen the first era we have experienced that time we are more scary we are trying to censor ourselves we are there is the kind of self censorship in uh, inside us by writing something on social media we are thinking twice or thrice to not to write or to force ourselves to be quiet this will ha- that will happen this will happen but this young generation is better than us i'm hopeful for them and they are participating more because they have grown up with the social media with the smartphones in hand with this taking photos recording events uh, recording uh, things on the street which is already happening so i think they do better job than us and they are quite active than us so you mean to say that they are very very open they are forthright they are going and they are assertive at the same time yeah yeah of course it is the age thing also because in this age of early young hood you don't care about anyone you are with what you 
show what you want to show. Uh, it is the hormone thing. We can take it that side too. But uh, it is because of their experience of life. They were brought, they saw the explosion. They saw the suicide attacks. They saw the bombards. They saw the attacks on villages and cities. But still, they are like, no, we are going forward. We are not accepting those things you people want want us to accept. Uh, so they're participating better than us. Like this uh, movement for for education. Uh, there's uh, good news today. In Afghanistan, we have announcement of the Concord exam, which is the university interns exam in Afghanistan. More than 200,000 young boys and girls uh, participated in this exam and more than 80,000 were accepted for different department in different uh, public universities across Afghanistan. But the topper was a girl. Her name is Selgay. She got uh, 352 out of uh, 360 which is quite fascinating. Like this generation will go forward. This generation is working so hard. They're not, they're not taking no uh, as an answer. Wonderful. And while it gives us all hope, including you who happen to be uh, seeing there the ground reality right now in Kabul, day in, day out, what advice you would yeah. give to such young person to uh, negotiate their way through in terms of saving themselves, saving um, their own ability to sustain and make long-term changes. Actually, I the one thing I could tell them that keep it up, you can do this. Uh, our father couldn't do much for us. They just uh, brought the uh, fight between communism and imperialism inside Afghanistan and they destroyed every single thing they could. We were grown up in era where we were dreaming of a better life. But we now, as we can say, we, we failed to. Uh, the government we built in last 20 years, the society we built is uh, about to it's already collapsed. We have lost the education, we lost the army, we have lost the police, we have lost the constitution, we have lost the government body, the parliament, the, the entire state body we have lost. But still, uh, they can do it, uh, not by fighting like our fathers did or some of our generation did, but by education, by speaking up, by participating in every real thing in their life. Uh, I think this is the only advice I can give them. Just keep it up. Don't stay back. It is your life. You matter. Your voice matter. And you have to do it. No one is going to do. We saw the vote coming inside of one. We saw the communists coming and then going up, uh, abandoning us. We saw the Islamic world who brought all the terrorist group from all, all around the world in Afghanistan to make Al-Qaeda and then left us, they abandoned us. We saw the American, the democracy, the, I don't know, the human right and all this propaganda which they brought in last 20 years and the last day, last day Joe Biden said we were not, never went to Afghanistan to do the nation building uh, work, and they abandoned us. They left us with, they sold us literally. Actually, I, we could claim by the 20, 25th Agri Doha agreement between Taliban and government. So now we have to accept that that whatever we are, younger or older, we Afghan should do something, and we should get responsibility for everything. Yes, we were responsible for the country, not Americans. We were responsible. We brought the war of communism to our country. We brought the jihad of the Islamic war to our country. We brought the uh, war against terrorism to our country. We brought everything to our country and destroyed every part of our society just because other wanted us. And we now we are the uh, one who take the blame. And so the younger should understand this thing and they should stand, including us. We should stand and we should fight for ourselves, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. And I think that is possibly a very powerful line, whatever it takes. One thing, I, yeah, one thing I want to clear. When I say whatever it takes, it doesn't mean we should pick up guns again. I'm against the war. I'm against the bullet and the guns and the bloodshedding. We should 
work as, as a civil society we should uh, start our um, work as people who know things who have studied things who have education who have knowledge by the power of knowledge we we should change the society we should stand against those who are trying to force us with their strict interpretation from the society from the rule from the power from the religion from the culture from everything they had in their hand we should bring them and we should make them face the new face of afghanistan and the new hope the the new generation has and the new interpretation of the life we have i mean with, with uh, whatever it takes i mean this yes it will be hard yes it will be some of us could Yes, some of us could be thrown out of the country. Yes, some of us will be beaten up on the streets like already happened last week. But we should walk through this. And that gives, that should give us a lot of hope. If I am to ask that, there in every country for that matter, including Afghanistan, you have people, mm -hmm. ideologies which are uh, for with, with which some others don't agree, differing ideologies, I mean, differing way of thoughts, I mean. But at the end of the day, the country belongs mm -hmm. to the society, the people belong to each other mm -hmm. and everyone. Now, mm -hmm. is there, are there common grounds on which everyone agrees, or young people in particular, they are clear that this is, there is, for this particular reason, there is nobody is uh, this way or that way. We are all together. Are there issues like that, especially mm -hmm. at the local level, at least? Yes, actually, there are lots of things that we could see people who were against the Taliban for 20 years. Now, say, if Taliban are able to bring security of Afghanistan, if Taliban are able to stop fight or the bloodshed in Afghanistan, or if Taliban are able to make a secure government system, system or state system for us, then we don't have problem with them. Yes, there will be problem with the interpretation of some rules. There will be problem with the uh, interpretation of some religious uh, thoughts. But uh, the first thing is that we should build Afghanistan. We should bring uh, good education and good security to our people. If that is possible by any team, by any anyone, we should support them. So this is the this thing. If the Taliban want to stay here, they should come to this conclusion with the new people. Yes, we are going to give you education, both for the girls and the boys. No problem. We can give you good security. We can give you, I don't know, like... Uh, uh, good health service, then there, there could be no problem. Everyone from everywhere in Afghanistan, from every province, from every district, just want these few things because we were the country living through war for 40 uh, almost. Now everyone is tired of this fight, this bloodshed, this killing each other for crazy things like for jihad, for communism, for democracy, for I don't know whatever things we did in the last 40 years. Now the youngest say, no, oh, we don't want anyone to help with uh, the international community, to help with the other people. If someone is to bring stability, to bring security and good uh, public service, they're standing with them, no matter who they are. I, and I think this is a, a good positive uh, sense. Even people who were like against the total ideology of Taliban now says we fight in the last two weeks. Yes, there are uh, political chaos in Kabul. There are people scary uh, trying to flee the country. All these things we have. But if it is going to finally be a stable government, then we should stay here. We shouldn't ac accept this. So you're primarily saying that as for the basic issues such as security, education, health, now people are demanding that these things be taken and developed by the government as a as the way they exactly, should. Exactly. Like in any ideology, way. ideologies. Mm -hmm, yeah. Exactly. Ideology is not such a big thing for you here. Actually, no one is uh, any more uh, fan of any ideology here. Even so the democracy, we're talking about ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean the ideas. Uh, actually, it is about the survival now for us. We are so far away from fighting the left or right. 
fighting for the fancy words you can find in political books or textbooks. Uh, so we are, people were dying daily basis here and still are dying. People don't have food to eat. People don't have clothes to wear. People don't have uh, a room to stay inside, a house to stay inside. So how can you tell those people to fight for this or that uh, ideology or for this or that system of, uh, or any other thing? You simply tell you I'm hungry. I don't care about what ideology you hold. I don't care how you interpret the law. I don't know how you interpret the system power or other things. I'm hungry, give me food. This is what we take. If someone is able to do this, then I think we are going forward with this. That's, that's really, um, I think the ground reality has changed. That is what you are signifi signifying and people are realizing it. Okay, um, by the way, the issues that you have pointed out, and I think there may be many are more issues at the ground level, be it related to water, be it related to uh, maybe infrastructure, be it related to housing, several other problems. Electricity, maybe yeah. jobs, of course, and different other requirements that people definitely have. Now, these things for any government, it will take years to reach a certain level of development. And that will take time. I think even in even even in a country like India, which is one of the fastest developing economy and a, a huge country, we are struggling with different issues. And I think this is true even for developed countries in the post-COVID world. If we uh, and there are all sorts of uh, economic challenges which different parts of the world are facing. So, if I'm to ask you, that will it may take for the government to solve these issues to the level that people want it? Maybe to two decades, maybe even three decades, okay. Now, people will have to really work hard. Now, how are young people thinking do their part? The government part is fine, but how they are thinking of being, how they have been doing maybe, uh, and how they are planning, or if not, what could be the way forward? What do you think? Uh, actually, uh, uh, in previous government, like uh, we were an open economy, uh, I remember my student who was still in uh, the second year of graduation, they start their own startups. Because uh, I, I told you this internet thing, internet is new thing in Afghanistan. We know internet like a common thing. After 2010, when world was experience, uh, experiencing internet since 1990s. Uh, so these all online startups were started with this new generation to create job for themselves. Like everyone knew that, especially after 2014, we were uh, facing lots of problem with creating job. Our government was struggling with this, but lots of young people went on internet and created their own startups online stores, online uh, startups, or even YouTube and TikTok channels to get money from there. Though Afghanistan ru uh, finance rules were not that clear about uh, online policy. So that's how they are doing it. This, uh, this saw this problem that government is not able to help us. So let's do it ourselves. About the education, I told you, they saw this system, the government that, you know, will see the school that they are not able to teach us the proper way to give us the proper education we need to get that's why we have to go for the international communities for the online sessions for speaking with other uh, people or going after scholarships of every country they could get or helping each other. I remember people, students who will sit and fail the scholarship, uh, do the scholarship paperwork for each other just the, so their friends can get the better education they want them. Uh, this is how they were doing it and people are doing it still here. Like uh, we have this problem of displaced people inside uh, internal displaced in Afghanistan. People went and bought food for them, shelters for, provide shelters for them to help these people. Well, government was in crisis. Just two weeks of, before the collapsing of this community, we have a huge crisis of displaced people in Kabul. People came from the north and south of the country to Kabul. They, 
living on street they were living in parks and a country like afghanistan where we had 45 years war we don't have people living on street this was the first experience we saw people living on street people went and give them shelter provide them with food uh, uh, provide them with clothes and other needs health needs doctors went and made uh, free camps uh, health comes for them this is how people like one thing which in afghanistan get um, uh, strong and it made the society strong was people helping each other in last 45 years we learned this that no one is helping us so we should uh, uh, help other if someone was di displaced from village from one district or from one city to other city people of that city will take them to their houses and will tell them stay in this room until you can go back to your place Probably. or giving food to people is a common thing people is doing in afghanistan uh, and giving clothes to each other especially in winters which is so cold here with the snow and all the ices uh, it was so common in afghanistan as i told you after the 45 years we had the first time people seeing who will stay on the street and people could not stand that that's why people went to help them in countries like usa or other european country you have people who's living on uh, streets i have seen it in india and in delhi people living on streets the uh, street is literally their house but in afghanistan we do, we do not have these things people won't let you sleep on the street they will come and they will ask and then they will do whatever they could that's how we are helping each other that's we stand as a society we stand strong together so the people are standing as a society young people are finding up their entrepreneurial spirit but one last question that comes to my mind is and it sounds really hopeful because i think mm -hmm. if people start helping each other getting together to solve their problems i think that could be the real way forward but still afghanistan is a vast country and i think most of the points that you have mentioned these sound urban specific maybe kabul peshawar what about rural afghanistan i think that issues there could be very very different actually uh... Actually, uh, I will tell you a surprising fact about uh, the rural areas. Those things which I made uh, about cities, it is more stronger in rural areas. For centuries, we do not have hotels in our uh, places, especially in our districts and rural areas. So people who would travel by with uh, caravans, with uh, travel from one city to other city, uh, following their caravans, they will go to the mosque of a village. They will stay there, and the village will provide them with food and shelters. At first, this, this culture have came from village to the cities in Afghanistan. Yeah, 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 personal. Yeah, but this is like, uh, uh, as people say, Afghan Afghans are hospitable. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, as people say, Afghans are hospitable. It is not like you don't need to know them to provide you help. You're just someone out of coming from out of some places. They will provide you with food, with uh, everything. Even Taliban, they were they were fighter in the village will get food from the villagers. Villages will provide them food uh, regardless of what they are doing, what they are fighting for. Because in our uh, culture, when someone is coming to your door or knocking on your door, not giving them food or not giving them a shelter is quite uh, wrong thing to do, quite immoral thing to do. Uh, th that's how they do it. Like our mask in the village is quite like a, uh, working as a hospital. Uh, what can I say, as a hotel or as a stay for a motel for people who is traveling. Also, one other thing, we have this thing called Hashar. When there is a family who have less people in them, uh, especially less men in their family, and they're not able to do the things by themselves, then the whole uh, village will make one or two days for them. They will leave everything moving and they will have this uh, uh, family with their things like uh, collecting their cops uh, from their fields or for building a room in their house or uh, building the wall which is fallen by snow or uh, or i don't know rain or something that's how they do hashar is su such a big thing in uh, afghan uh, society 
we, we are everyone should go and help them uh, when there is uh, someone die in a family in rural areas or, or more it is common the whole, whole village will stand for walking or uh, treating people who is coming to the family who have a, a dead person in their family they will help uh, help them and in our culture they should not set a fire for cooking something up to seven days three times food should be provided for them with any cost this is like the cultural thing with the wedding the same thing if someone is going to have wedding the entire village should stand there and help with their guests and their wedding party and do all the thing this is how our yes because we are not so much westernized we are not so much uh, this uh, what you call this industrialized society we are helping each other we are still it sounds so many evil i know this but this is how we live this is how our society go forward this is how we help each other and how we do and save our, ourselves as a society i think this is the greatest sign of hope and we wish all of guns to keep helping each other and whatever young Thank people from across the world can do for each other as young fellows fellow citizens fellow human beings so thank you so much for uh, sparing this much time at this difficult in this difficult with us and wish you all the best and wish afghan friends all the very best thank you thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much thank you, so much. Thank you. nice talking to you